What's going on guys? Welcome back to another MCAT discreet quick 3000 magic time. All right, during this time, you guys are going to do these MCAT discreet questions. These are BB questions, okay? You're going to do them as quickly as possible and hopefully you get them all right. So, this is the first question. Pause it, pick your answer, write it down. Second question, pause it, pick your answer, write it down. Third question, pause it, pick your answer, write it down. 12th question, pause it, pick your answer, write it down. Hopefully you get them all right. And if you don't, I'll teach you and show you exactly how you get them all right. All right, let's begin. Heart murmurs are extra abnormal sounds beyond the normal closure of the valves produced during the cardiac cycle. They can be caused by stenotic, stiffened valves or by valves that do not close properly and allow regurgitation. Murmurs are classified as diastolic or systolic depending on when the additional sound is produced. A heart murmur caused by a failure of the AV valves to close properly would most likely be classified as a what? Okay, so if it's caused by the AV valves not closing properly, you know what the AV valves are? The AV valves are the, the valves connecting the atria to the ventricles. Those are the AV valves, all right? And you should know what systolic and diastolic is. Okay, systolic is after that blood goes from the atria to the ventricle. All right, and if it's during that time, this is going to be a systolic murmur. All right, it's going to be a systolic murmur. So diastolic is wrong. Diastolic is wrong. All right, if it was failure of the, let's say, like the pulmonary valve or aortic valve, if it was failure of that to close properly, then that would be a diastolic murmur but since we're talking about atrium to ventricle that is a systolic murmur okay now systolic murmur because this would allow regurgitation of blood from the ventricles to the atria during systole yeah that's what regurgitation is that's what happens systolic murmur because this would allow additional blood to flow from the atria to the ventricles during systole okay this is wrong but i'll, I'll explain a little further okay the noise they hear, the murmur, is from the blood hitting back at those AV valves. That is a murmur. Okay, The murmur is not caused by more blood flowing into the ventricle from the atria. That doesn't make the sound. The backflow it makes the sound. Okay, So 9 is B. Which of the following conditions is least likely to lead to a spontaneous reaction? All right, if you want something to be spontaneous, okay, Delta H minus delta D. S. You already know this is delta H equals delta delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. All right, and we want it. Oh, the least likely to be a spontaneous. All right, so spontaneous is negative. So we're gonna want it something positive because that means it's least likely to be spontaneous. All right, the more non spontaneous it is, the more least likely it is to be spontaneous. Okay, so what do we want here? How do we make this as much positive as possible? Well, we want this value to be high and we want this value to be low simple so we want a high delta h and a low temperature and a low delta s so which one says that large negative no 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 okay the only one that says large positive delta h is this one run at a low temperature yeah we want that low and has a large decrease in entropy yeah, we want the decrease, we want it low, we want this high. Therefore, the answer is D. That's how you do it, guys. Simple, MCAT is easy. Whoever told you MCAT is hard is lying to your face, okay? It's very easy. Which of the following statements about bile is slash are true? Simple content interview. There's no, there's no excuse for getting this one wrong. All right, bile emulsifies lipids for easier digestion. Correct, okay? The amphipathic nature of bile allows it to digest lipids. It does not digest lipids. It doesn't do that. Bile is produced by the liver and gallbladder. No, it is only produced by the liver and gets stored in the gallbladder. And when that gallbladder contracts, it pushes that bile through the, uh, the cystic duct and then through the hepatic pancreas ampulla and through that sphincter and it goes to the small intestine, in the small intestine, and then helps emulsify these fats and after emulsifies the fats these droplets are now 
able to be acted upon by pancreatic lipase and after pancreatic lipase even breaks them up even further they get that formed into a, a micelle that's now small and now in that micelle those fats are in there in that micelle now that micelle ejects the lipid contents into the enterocyte okay the enterocyte is the the cell that lines the small intestine okay so the micelle ejects those lipid contents into the enterocyte and in the enterocyte we have the nucleus you have the endoplasmic reticulum, smoothie R, yeah, yeah. In the enterocyte, then we're making some proteins, we're packaging those lipids, putting them back together into a chylomicron, and now that chylomicron in the enterocyte gets dumped into the lacteal, and now that chylomicron in the lacteal then goes uh, up the lymphatic system, empties... Uh, it empties through, I forgot which one it is, but then, you know, it goes to the inferior vena cava, and then from the vena cava, it goes to the heart, all right, it enters at the right atrium, so you have a fatty heart, that's what happens, all right, that's what happens, so only one is A, I did not need to explain that whole thing, but you're welcome for that, sodium laurel sulfate, a common ingredient in hand soap, functions due to the combination of its hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. This amphipathic nature allows for the removal of hydrophobic substances with water. Which of the following would most likely increase the effectiveness of sodium lauryl sulfate? Benzene, I don't see why that would. Sodium bicarbonate, that makes sense because this is a base, okay? And if you're adding a base, you're increasing the pH. If you're increasing the pH, you're more likely to deprotonate this hydrophilic head and if we deprotonate it we're now putting a charge on the head it can be positive or negative probably going to be a negative charge if that pk is very low okay so we're putting that negative charge on that head and now that negative charge in that head can then go and interact with the hydro feel like the water soluble you know the dirt whatever and the other part, the hydrophobic tail, can interact with the hydrophobic stuff, like the fats or whatever. And that can make up and then be washed away into the sink or whatever. So 12 is B. All right, and that's it. Let's see if we got them all right. Let's go, let's go. Don't worry about the 118. I put blank for all of them just because I wanted to see doing these live for you guys. So let's see, what do we do? 9 is B. Let's see if we got it right. B. 10 is D, 11 is A, and 12 is B. So D, A, B, D, A, B. We got them all right. That's how you do it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.